Hello and welcome to LA Currents. I'm Saida Pagan. Strong earthquakes have been hitting the Southland recently, making us wonder whether we are ready for the big one. And with us to give us information about what we need to do is Chris Ibsen, who is with the City of Los Angeles Emergency Management Department. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having us. Appreciate you. Chris, a lot of us think we're ready, but the truth is we're only halfway there. There's so much to think about, the home, the office, where, wherever else. Let's begin by talking about what we need to do to get our homes ready. Great, yeah, just like you mentioned, uh, most of us think we are prepared till we have either an earthquake or a shelter in place situation, and we wonder if we have the right uh, preparedness in place. As far as the home, uh, we recommend, uh, we've seen that most people get hurt with non-structural things, uh, bookshelves, mirrors not pro properly hung, uh, heavy items that are throughout the home that we don't pay attention to, till uh, if you saw images of the recent earthquake we had, uh, one of the, the ones that uh, kept in my mind is the one in the library, where all of the books collapsed and it was sheer mess. So what is your home? What, uh, and, and a lot of people say, I can't afford to hire a contractor. So we're talking about non-structural things that a Home Depot or a uh, home improvement store can provide. And that's basically structuring or, or securing your shelves, your mirrors to the, the studs, you know, so, so it's secure and safe. So that's one of the biggest things for us. Uh, do you have an escape route in case you're asked to evacuate quickly? And where is your meeting place? Uh, we, and around my house, we have a, a local park that we chose to find a, a place to meet. So it's a family gathering place because you may not have communications. So uh, obviously communication is going to be essential. How do we communicate with our family? Uh, we've seen cellular phones in big emergencies. There's no, no availability of service. So we recommend a, a, texting, uh, a texting group or even Facebook. Uh, Instagram if you have that. So social media is really a way to leverage uh, your communication capabilities as, as it's shown very, uh, re to be very resilient. Uh, as far as uh, basic first aid supplies, have a, a good first aid kit in hand in case somebody does get hurt. And if you are able to take first aid CPR training, we recommend that you do that, offered by uh, organizations like the American Red Cross. Uh, your go kit a quick go kit because uh, we've seen that not only even during an earthquake but a brush fire if you live in that kind of zone you may get uh, authorities knocking on your door and saying you need to leave and you need to leave now do you have that go kit with the essential supplies uh, some basic food some water uh, f clothing sturdy shoes those kind of things you could be in bed and the earthquake hits people say well what do I do do I run out of bed no you're supposed to uh, huddle up and put a pillow over yourself and if you've done that non-structural mitigation that I talked about you shouldn't have any heavy items that aren't secured above your bed uh, but in case you would cover up in a, with a pillow and then once the shaking stops if you want to get off your bed have those sturdy shoes ready to go so you can go ahead and do a uh, size up of your home is anybody hurt uh, those kinds of things so those are the the basics um, you know the uh, water heaters are they uh, are they uh, structurally uh, secured to the walls uh, do you know how to shut off your gas in case you do smell gas? We remind people that if you don't smell gas, don't shut it off because you could be left without that service. But if you smell it, do you have any idea? I have a uh, wrench right next to my gas meter and I've shown my whole family how to shut off the gas if need be. Uh, where the water shut off is, that's important. A lot of folks don't know that. Uh, so those are some of the tips that we recommend for the household. How much food, how much water? For how uh, many days? Yeah, obviously depending on the size of the family, but for each individual, we like uh, at least three to four gallons per person. So you're looking at if you have a household of four or five, maybe 20 gallons of water, and that water should be stored in a cool area uh, away from the ground because we notice that concrete could leach into the water and, and, and uh, possibly compromise the quality of the water. So water storage is important. Know where to store it. Rotate it. Uh, we know that uh, there is uh, water you can purchase that has a five to, uh, we've seen some of them that have 50 year shelf life. Uh, so obviously if you have that, you don't have to rotate it as much, but regular consumer water is about every six months. We recommend that you rotate that supply and uh, use it as part of your regular rotation of that and food. Um, you need to have three to, three to 10 days is what we recommend. Obviously uh, food that's not perishable you know, like pastas, uh, canned goods, and obviously make sure that you have stuff for your children. 
that they will like it. Some people have stored food. We've heard my kids won't eat it. They're stuck in a, in a you know, in a earthquake scenario. They don't have access to a lot of food, uh, but they wouldn't eat it. So make sure it's stuff that your kids do like, but uh, definitely uh, take a look at food, water, and, and obviously with water, that's going to be your most uh, critical supply because they say that you can live um, with wa just water for at least four to five days depending on your health condition. What about medicine? Obviously very important, uh, you know, if you have, let's say your mother-in-law lives with you uh, and they require medicines, uh, you have an ample supply, but is that going to last? How long will that last? So we recommend that you reach out to their doctor and say, hey, uh, we're gathering our emergency supplies. Uh, what uh, can we get some extra medicines uh, that we can rotate in so you know once you finish your supplies you keep rotating them through but obviously you want to have additional supplies for elders uh, for your children that may, may need these uh, medical supplies so uh, think about that uh, that's an essential uh, part of that kit. Now we talked about the home what about your car your vehicle? Yeah, we, we look at the vehicle, the workplace, and the homestead, right? So at, uh, as far as your vehicle, you know, we like to use the example, you're driving to Las Vegas, it's very hot, it's a five hour drive, you get a flat tire, you're in your heels, uh, and you got no water. What are you gonna do? So you don't wanna be that person. A small kit, trunk size is what we recommend, basically a condensed version of what we, we recommend for the home. So that would be some, uh, maybe some uh, protein bars, some energy bars, uh, some water, uh, a first aid kit, some sturdy shoes. Don't forget, it could be nighttime. So what about a, a good flashlight with replacement batteries in case you haven't checked those batteries? Uh, a blanket, because it could be cold. The desert has fluctuations in temperature. You could go from hot to cold very quickly. Uh, so I always have a nice uh, duffel bag uh, with uh, clothing, whether it's hot or cold, I can, you know, take care of that. So that's really the essential of uh, in the vehicle. Now, Chris, tell us about your office. I know you do an awful lot to help the people of Los Angeles. So tell us what you do. Yeah, so we're a full-time emergency management office, and obviously uh, we're thankful that the city of Los Angeles and the budget uh, supports that. Uh, a lot of cities don't do that. They don't have a full-time emergency management program, and we've actually built that up. We now have 30 full-time staff, so we're very appreciative of that. Uh, so we have the planning component because there's over 16 hazards nationally recognized, anywhere from tsunamis to flooding, earthquakes, terrorism. Uh, all of that needs uh, some very detailed planning, mass scale planning. So we have a whole planning division. We have over 50 plans that we handle in annexes. We have an emergency uh, um, uh, community preparedness division that handles uh, anything to do with uh, preparing communities. One of our big programs right now is Rylan Ready Your LA Neighborhood. And that's actually something you can look up on a, on a search engine and it'll pop up as Rylan. And so we have always recommended preparedness at the individual household for the individual. What we found to be more effective is at the neighborhood level, anywhere between 40 to 50 homes. We're at, you may, you may be a nurse, I may be a contractor, you may be having a person that's an architect that has structural knowledge that can do search and rescue operations. And what Ryland does is it puts an emergency a component, a team component, to your neighborhood, so you'll have a uh, incident commander, so to speak, somebody that's in charge. You have folks that are in charge of search and rescue, so they have roles and responsibilities. So that division handles that situation. My division, I'm the operations chief, and what we do is we have one of the world's most sophisticated emergency operations center, $110 million facility built to uh, withstand an 8.0 earthquake. Uh, but that requires a lot of maintenance, technology, and all of the upgrades. We're 10 years old now, so we're looking at upgrades to the facility. And then we have alternate sites, because what if that one's compromised? We still have to respond to the residents. We have to take care of our, our resources and so forth. So we have identified alternate sites that need to be maintained as well. And then we have our, obviously our administrative folks that handle all of the bill paying and all of these kinds of things. So that's really the primary component of the department. Uh, for the regular resident out there, the, the community preparedness is really what they're going to be reaching out to. We also have our communication shop, our Ready LA brand, our Notify LA brand, all of these great resources for the public. Those are all handled within our department. 
We actually uh, host tours of our center, so if any residents are out there watching and are interested uh, where their ta tax dollars are going, uh, we're more than welcome to host a tour, show you what we have. Uh, it's basically a facility that's ready to go 24-7. Uh, we like to say that if you have a plumbing leak or an issue with your roof, you can call any roofer. Uh, when the residents call 911 or there's an emergency, they have no other choice but us. We want to be as ready as we can. We want to give them quality service. Absolutely. Let's go back to talking about preparedness. Now, we mentioned about the home. We talked about the home. What about the office or place of business? What should employers and employees keep in mind? Great question. Uh, we spend so much time at work, as you know, in my opinion, a little too much, but that's the way it is. Uh, and so, first of all, if you're a business owner, we say 80% of the businesses in Los Angeles are small businesses. So for us, uh, we saw during Northridge, the large earthquake impacted a lot of small, small businesses. They weren't able to recover. And so for a small business owner, is, uh, we also have our, uh, our community readiness division that helps small business planning. So do you have a small business plan in place where you can contact your employer and give them information, your, excuse me, your employees, and give them information about what do they expect, are they expected to show up to work? Uh, how is your, uh, if you're relying on technology, your infrastructure, is that protected? Do you have insurance for your small business? Uh, how resilient, we talked about uh, non-structural mitigation in the home, but what about your business? The same type of thing. You don't want an earthquake to hit where your employees are, you know, things are collapsing on them and so forth. So small business uh, owners have a lot of responsibility. If you're an employee, uh, we all have small kits in our cubicles. I have a small kit that I can grab if I need to. Uh, it's, it includes the flashlights, some water, some food. Uh, file cabinets are a common way to get hurt at work. You'd be surprised how many people have been hurt with file cabinets. So where is that file cabinet position? Is it something that can, in a shaker, we've seen how violent uh, earthquakes can get. You'd be amazed how things move. So is that something you've looked at? How do you allocate your er ergonomics, as we call it, of your cubicle? So um, where is your gathering place if you're asked to evacuate? Uh, so those are the things, like I said, we have more information on that, but a lot of uh, responsibility for not only the owner but the employee. And uh, we also encourage if you're uh, an employee that, you know, is an essential, excuse me, an essential employee that you're maybe the number two person, that, that uh, business owner is going to want you there. So how is your preparedness at home? Most people say, you know what, I'm going to take care of my family, then I'll show up to work. But if you're an essential employee like I am, i got to make sure my family's dialed in, my house is dialed in, so I can make sure I show up to work and, and uh, be able to provide a service to not only my boss but for our customers. A lot of us, uh, a lot of us don't always know how to react in a situation. We mentioned at home, you get under some you know, table or whatever when the quake is happening. But what about if you are on a freeway overpass? You're on the freeway. It's rush hour in Los Angeles. For me, that's one of the most terrifying thoughts, being stuck in a quake at that time. What do you do? Well, first of all, keep in mind, uh, panic is the last thing you want to do. So for peace of mind, know that here in Southern California, we have some of the finest building codes in the world. So those bridges, those overpasses that you're on are regularly checked. They're the responsibility of the state of California. So they regularly, you may not see them out there, but they have resources that their job is to look for cracking, for some kind of a, a sign that there may be some stru structural issues with the overpass. So that goes on on a regular basis. Those are checked and I'm very confident in our infrastructure. So uh, what we don't want people to do is get out of their vehicle and, and start running uh, out of their vehicles. Uh, then the next person's gonna see that. Next thing you know, we have everybody running. Now that thing collapses, then you could have a problem. Uh, obviously, ha make sure you have your seatbelt on because if there is shaking, you wanna have that, uh, that seatbelt on so you're secure. Uh, if it's a situation where traffic is not moving, hopefully you have that kit that we mentioned in the vehicle, because you may be there two, three, four hours. Uh, you don't want to have to knock on the next car over, hey, you got any water, I'm thirsty. Peace of mind is that you have your own kit, you're prepared. Uh, a lot of the recommendations are for if you are driving, you feel the earthquake, that's going to feel like a flat tire. Pull over to the road safely, don't hit anybody, but avoid the overpasses. So we know that's a tip, but your question is, if I'm actually on the overpass, it's jammed up, 
my my recommendation and our recommendation is those bridges are 99 percent going to hold up to the shaking stay in your vehicle have your kit turn on uh, what i like doing is am radio has a 24 7 news listen to the news get information be informed a lot of it is is not having information could be pretty stressful and even social media i like following knx myself 24 7 very knowledgeable very up-to-date information let's talk again about our families we know that we need to have a plan so could you give us more information about what kind of plan needs to be in place especially if you have small children yeah uh, we know schools have great plans uh, so be aware of what is the school i mean do, do the schools want you to show up uh, they may not want you to show up because they're they're worried about uh, you know securing the location whatever the incident may be now all of a sudden the parents show up and it causes more confusion more bedlam so knowledge again be informed what is the school's plan what are their expectations depending on the scenario there could be different scenarios we're talking about an earthquake but what if it's an active shooter what if it's a, uh, a hazardous material where they want to be sheltered in place and you driving over there is actually adding to the problem. So be informed, know what the, ch the child's uh, uh, school plan is. That's very important. As far as within your own family, I like to go over at dinner time what is our, I like throwing what I call uh, thunderbolts. And those are basically what if scenarios. And I'll say, what if we had an earthquake right now and you were at school? We kind of just, you know, talk about what are, the, what are some of the things that we think about. And it may bring up questions. It may be, uh, it may identify gaps in your family plan. Uh, it could be, okay, so let's say we had an earthquake and uh, we can't get a hold of each other because I already mentioned earlier in the segment that cell phones most likely won't be operating. Uh, we have a text message group within, uh, within our family called La Familia and we're able to communicate hopefully. Uh, if not, we have a, a local park that I mentioned earlier where we'll meet up. Uh, so have a gathering place. Uh, if it's a situation where it's a, a house fire, what are your escape routes? If you have a two-story home, do you have a way to get your children out? You know, so we actually go through scenarios uh, on a quarterly basis. Uh, my kids think I'm a little bit out there on that. Uh, even hotels, you know, you go on a vacation. First thing I do is point out the escape routes. If this happens, they go, Dad, why are you always thinking about this stuff? This is that's my business. I that's. That's what I do. So communicating, talking about it, don't be afraid to bring that up. You'll find, you mentioned it earlier, that uh, the kids sometimes know more than adults on what to do. So it's really a two-way conversation. It's not just the adults, but the kids say, hey, at school we learned this. Um, my son's school regularly has a sheriff that shows up that tells me things that, that I didn't even know about. So just to be able to sit down at dinner, engage in a conversation, you know, we talked about supplies and things like that, but this is the stuff that really matters is how to communicate, where do we meet, what are the, the, the children's school plans. These are the kind of things you should be uh, very aware of. And let's talk about our pets. How do we keep both small as well as large animals safe? Well, uh, pets uh, are just like our children, right? Very important. So what, uh, what are some of the, you know, even down to like uh, what toys uh, do we have for our pets? Uh, if we're asked to leave, let's say you live in an area where there's wildfires and you got to take your pet, uh, what is the shelter uh, policy? For the city of Los Angeles, it used to be a strict, no, you can't take your pets. We found out that people uh, won't leave unless they can bring their pets. So now we have Animal Services, a very good partner of ours, where you could actually take a pet to a shelter. And they have these things called Mighty Movers where you can keep your pet close by, check on your pet, but also uh, uh, be a, a resident of that shelter. So pets are, uh, they're pet friendly here in the city of Los Angeles with something that's very positive. Uh, so do they need any special uh, medicines? Um, you know, just kind of like almost like caring for an adult or a, or a person, a, a pet, same type of thing. Um, you know, and then now we're recommending obviously through animal services. Let's say you're, a lot of pets will feel the earthquake maybe run away. Do we have a way to track the pet? So there's a lot of ways that animal services, our city department provides a lot of services. My recommendation is uh, you either go to a local animal uh, shelter location or go to their website and look for additional tips.
According to news reports, we've been hearing that this seismic activity is going to increase in the future. So what is your office doing to get people in LA to be more serious, to take it more seriously? Yeah, LA, uh, we have the, the luxury and the, the reason why so many people live here is the weather. We like to say it's usually about 75 or 80 degrees and boring, right? Meaning we don't have tornado issues normally, uh, hurricanes, these kinds of things. So uh, we have an area that people, uh, you know, there's a lot to do. There's beaches. So the last thing people want to do is think about preparedness. Even tsunamis, we're very, we have a lot of areas in the city that are susceptible to tsunamis. So let's say you're at the beach and all of a sudden uh, we have a earthquake off the coast and then the lifeguard tells you, you got to get out. Uh, are you prepared for that scenario? There's evacuation routes and so forth. So um, our office is challenged by what we call windows of opportunity. So these recent earthquakes, uh, our phones are ringing off the hook. Uh, can you come out and do a presentation for my neighborhood association? Uh, I'd like to get more information about getting prepared because I'm hearing that earthquakes are going to start happening more and more with more frequency. So for us, we look at this as a window of opportunity. I mentioned the Ryland program, Ready Your LA Neighborhood. We challenge people to look that up. Uh, we have uh, eight uh, emergency managers that are dedicated in the valley, in the west side, the east side, the central part, the south side. We cover whatever area, whatever your size. It could be a, a vertical uh, building, you know, a, a 50 residences in a building. We handle these kinds of things. So we want people to get prepared, to get to know their neighbors. I know that's a big no-no in Los Angeles, but it really is. You'll see that neighbors coming together, what are their skills uh, and these kinds of things. As far as uh, communications, one of the things that we want people to do is our Notify LA product. That's our mass notification system. Uh, that's going to be the quickest and most effective way. It's like that Amber Alert that you get sometimes or National Weather Service if we have some flash flooding coming our way. They can take over the phones. That's what we want to do. And we want people to go to notifyla.org and register for this. It's a free uh, mass notification system. We don't charge you for that. You'll get those alerts only when it's something that's eminent, some kind of danger or an earthquake happening. Uh, we're going to let you know. We're going to let you know. We're going to give you critical information. We're not going to send you information about a local picnic or anything like that. So it's really pertinent information. Uh, we, all, we have a population of over 4 million. Daytime could be 7 million because of all the people that come to Los Angeles to work. But we only have about 200,000 people registered. So we really need people to step up, take action today, and register uh, for NotifyLA.org. And where can people go for more general information? Ready LA is our brand. Uh, so we readyla.org, very comprehensive website. Uh, it's got information of what to do you know, prior to, during, and after. After people go, uh, I mentioned small businesses going out of business because they're not ready for any type of calamity. So you need to be prepared before, during, and how am I going to recover? I mentioned insurance. Do I have the insurance? What are some of those things that I need to do so I can recover quickly? So it's not only the preparedness and the response, but the recovery actions. And that's something that Ready LA has. It's a, it's a comprehensive website that has all that information. Chris, if there were 10 to 12 basic actions and things and that people would need to have or to do at this point in time with all the seismic activity, what would they be? Yeah, great question. Uh, we've gone through a lot of information, but it's nice to have a like a top 10 list. So again, I mentioned the important family documents. That's critical to have your identifications, uh, maybe passports, um, uh, medical records, insurance records, these kind of things that in a large earthquake, you may not have access to that. So that's going to be critical. Medical. So do you have uh, the provider information? Do you have uh, your medical record number? What are those medicines that you need? So really important stuff. How about that first aid kit? You get uh, somebody that gets hurt. You may not know how to treat them. But having a first aid, is, uh, first aid kit is peace of mind for you. Tools, uh, some basic tools. You're looking at batteries, uh, wrenches. Uh, I mentioned how to shut off your gas valve. That is, it requires a special tool, so those kind of things. Supplies. Uh, do you have cash? I know everybody now is an electronic society. Look around, everybody's using plastic. 
cash is going to be essential because those systems may be down. So small bills are recommended. Supplies like cash and so forth. Water and food, we'll talk about that. Uh, are you aware of anybody in your area or your responsibility that has dis any kind of disability? Are they on a wheelchair? Because that involves a lot of preparedness, a lot of information that we have. So think about people with disabilities, uh, babies, children, and pets. Those are huge things that we need to talk about. Formula and bottles, diapers, medications, these kinds of things. For the pets, identification tags, extra food, uh, cleanup supplies, these kinds of things. So to me, that's my top 10 list. So let's talk, I know you've mentioned about that kit. So what are some of the top must-haves in that emergency kit? Number one, water. We talked about that. So we talk about one gallon per person in your family, enough for three to 10 days. Food for three to 10 days, like we talked about, including pet food, don't forget. The radio, do you have a radio? I know people say I have the radio in the vehicle, but I always have a AM radio battery operated because that's gonna give you information. Flashlights, uh, we don't know about power. People lose power, it can go pretty bad. Make sure you have flashlights or a way to light things up. That first aid kit have a basic first aid kit where you can use bandages, disinfectants, and so forth. Cash and important documents, that's gonna be in that kit. You gotta have small bills, birth certificates, those kind of things. Sanitation and hygiene supplies. I have a bucket with some uh, plastic bags because uh, the sewer system may not be working. That's something that's very important. Tools, we mentioned wrenches, duct tapes, fire extinguisher, do you have that ready to go? And then clothing and sturdy shoes under your bed. If you got to get out, make sure you got, because you may have broken glass and so forth. So those are the things that you need to have in that kit. Do you recommend that people have a landline in addition to a cell phone? Right, most people now are bundling, so you're looking at internet. If the internet's down, guess what? Your phone's down. So what we like are the old school uh, copper lines. Uh, so yes, you have that copper line. It's uh, even if the power goes out, you're still gonna have, uh, there's enough power in, the, in that line that's what the, uh, you know, the, uh, the providers have told us. You're gonna have a way to communicate. So yes, a landline, I know most people don't have them. Everybody relies on cell phones, but if you can, get yourself a landline. Is there anything that's important for us to know that we haven't discussed today? Uh, in general, like I mentioned, Los Angeles, great place to live, but we have uh, so many different things that can happen. Uh, just be aware of your surroundings. Uh, you know, it sounds like, uh, we've heard of the tips even. Uh, if you see something, say something, suspicious activities. We've seen a lot of things go sideways when people call it in. Uh, the authority said the reason we were able to stop this threat or whatever is because of a citizen took their time or a resident took their time to make a phone call. So be aware of your surroundings. Don't, don't be afraid to call the authorities if you see some, something suspicious because the, the law enforcement, the fire, uh, resources can't be all out there. We're out there. We're our first responders. Let's be vigilant of our surroundings. With regards to earthquakes, is there anything else that you wanted to mention about the earthquake preparedness issue? Uh, yeah, people ask about earthquake weather. Uh, I think that's a myth. Dr. Lucy Jones has said it's a myth. There is no such thing. Uh, we need to be ready at any time. So wherever I'm at, whether it's at a concert or I'm at a basketball game or whatever, be aware of your exit routes. Uh, be aware of where you would drop cover and hold on. Uh, identify locations wherever you're at where there's mass people. Uh, what are your escape routes? What are your actions that you'll take? You mentioned some people got caught flat-footed with the shaking. They didn't know what to do. What that instills is a panic behavior. So for us is practicing your mind. Anytime you practice, uh, and you execute that practice, you're gonna be uh, much better off than if you just go with your instincts. Well, thank you for sharing all of this great information. We really appreciate it and really need it at this point in time. Well, thank you for joining us for this edition of LA Currents. I'm Saida Pagan. <laughs>